Okay, so welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is, uh, you know, dual, you know, how to make a deck, you know, dual archetype and shared, you know, effects in an archetype. So obviously, in part four, I talked about, like, you know, uh, activation conditions and more about, you know, activating them, you know, with chains stuff like that but now in this video we're going to branch out and going to go to the main you know the the main thing we're going to do something different we're talking about like deck creation and deck construction and one of the things that i'm going to be talking about is making dual archetype triple archetype quadruple archetype you know making decks that have multiple archetypes first of all when it comes to deck creation um it's important to understand card uh, to, un to understand again go to back to basics cards and activation conditions obviously like i could hammer home upon that but in uh, you know in what i'm trying to say is just like having cards you know with easy activation conditions is a good start it's a good indicator for making you know a good deck now one of the things when you get uh, when you're doing uh, deck creation especially when you're going to dual archetype multiple archetype and getting archetypes with shared effects one of the things is that you've got to build a linchpin right you've got to build uh, when you're building decks you know that have multiple archetypes let's say for example we take uh, an archetype like chalice right and now like we're going to follow the lore of chalice you know where the chosen one says like you know there are seven legacies so in theory follow that lore there's seven archetypes but how do we put these archetypes together? How do we link them all? Now, what you do is, is that you need to find one archetype that your main job when you're doing multiple archetypes is that each archetype is supposed to fulfill a certain role that the other archetype lacks. So they're meant to fill in a weakness that, you, that the current archetype doesn't have. That's one aspect of doing it. Another aspect is to just have one of them centered around, you know, one main archetype. So again, when we come to like Chalice, for example, we have, uh, you know, World Chalice, right? And World Chalice, like, you know, they, they revolve around, you know, the cult World Legacy, World Chalice. And World Legacy, World Chalice's effect is that, you know, when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to add any World Legacy card from your deck to your hand, right? So you see here we have something that's simple, that's easy, and this is a uh, this is one of the uh, this is a card that allows you to search the card that you need to play the deck effectively. Then we can go to you know like uh, you know another archetype like Mech Knights. So we look at Mech Knights and how do we push it into you know Chalice? How can we make this fit together? Um, what we do is we look for the common effect, and this is where it's good to have. It's good to look at shared effects when you look at an effect that is among these two archetypes and one of the archetype uh, one of the things you'll notice is that chalice has an issue right whereas when it's in the graveyard it allows you to when world legacy world chalice right it activates the effect by banishing itself in the graveyard so it banishes itself and then it can no longer be retrieved however with the me with mech knights they have a continuous spell that has an ability that you can target one banished world legacy card and add it to your hand. You see, all of a sudden, there's some kind of synergy. So there we have there with Mech Knights. You see right there, we have something right there. Yeah, it's really cool, it's really nice. We've got something right there. Um, yeah. And then also we can use like, you know, Mech Knight Avram, which is, you know, um, you know, a normal monster, right? Which would allow you, you know, the ability to go into Chalice plays more easily. There's also the fact that we you know with Mech Knights we have like Mech Knight Girsu, which again will allow you the ability to go into Mech Knights more easily. Plus, because it's an Orcus card, you can go to Orcus combos. But let's leave that aside for a moment. Let's just start with that. So we have Mech Knights. So we have, first of all, in Chalice, we have the World Legacy World Chalice that allows you to start, add any World Legacy card. We then have, um, you know, Mech Knights. We have the World Legacy, you know, we have. You know, the continuous spell allows you to add any banished world legacy card from your banished zone back into your hand. And then we go to crawlers. Here's what here's where we have 
we now want to add another card that can help. And one of those cards is, you know, one of the crawler cards, you know, World Legacy Survivor. Now, it's a crawler card with the following ability. You can excavate the top five cards of your deck. And if one of those five cards is a crawler or a World Legacy card, you can add it to your hand. Already, we have a card right here that adds consistency. So this is already, we're down to three archetypes already. And we already have a card. And we, we see this familiar theme of adding a World Legacy card. So first of all, in Chalice, Chalice adds you a World Legacy card from your Banisher. Mech Knight allows you to add, you know, Chalice allows you to, sorry, Chalice, you know, allows you to add a World Legacy card from your Graveyard by banishing, you know, by banishing itself. Then you have the Mech Knight side of it, that allows you to add a Banished World Legacy card. And then we have the Crawler that allows you to excavate the top five to add a World Legacy card. All of a sudden, we have, we're getting more and more consistent okay so then let's go to crusadia right so we have crusadia and how can we add this in to all this uh, mechs so we have some chalice adds mech knight you know reinforces and then we have another added but with um crusadia what we can do is we can have you know the Here's all we need some negation, we need some way to pr uh, protect ourselves. And we have the World Legacy, World Legacy Crown, which ability is, you know, it allows you to, um, you know, negate us a monster from the extra deck. We can also use another World Legacy card, you know, that, that's come out as well, uh, which is World Legacy Lights, which allows you the ability, again, to you know, reduce an opponent, uh, you know, uh, an attack to to zero, you know, by 3,000. Again, it's non-targeting. You know, stuff like that. And this is where things just get a little bit... And so we've, that's Crusadia. And then we go to Orcus. Now, here with Orcus, things get a little bit interesting. So, already we have the synergy with the other archetypes. These are four, these are four archetypes. Uh, you know, Orcus makes it five, and all of a sudden we can use, um, you know, Mech Knight Orcus Gearsu, which is as well as a Mech Knight card, as, as well as an Orcus card, but this allows you to go into Orcus plays. And because it's linked to Mech Knight, it means that you can then use the, uh, you know, the cards from the Crawler side of things to excavate them, dump them into your graveyard. So, so Orcus can... So Crawler helps you go into Orcus, Orcus helps you go into Mech Knight, and Mech Knight helps you go into Chalice. All of a sudden, things are linking, things are going together. And so, you know, there's stuff like that. Then we go into, um, what is it? Into Guard Dragons. And with Guard Dragons, you know, we have the card World Legacy World Arc. So we can then protect our, our, you know, Link Monsters from destruction. And all of a sudden, all these... Uh, you know, seven, six, six, you know, seven archetypes, you know, they all come together. They all come together in a combination of something great, of something uh, fantastical. And when we come into a guard dragon, we have like the world legacy just TCR. We then have world legacy Ib. We have, you know, you know, legacy just TCR. We have, have Ib. And all of a sudden, you can get a play that resembles something like this. So, when we put all these archetypes together, all of a sudden we get something like this. You'll normal summon Mech Knight Avro. Link summon into Imduk. The effect of Guard Dragon Gamadis. When a normal monster leaves the field, right, you can special summon this card from your hand. So we've gone into Chal from ch fr so we've started with Mech Knight. Mech Knight's gone into Chalice. Chal a Chalice Link Summon has gone into a Guard Dragon. But wait, there's more. You can then tribute your uh, you know your Gamadis. Right, for World Legacy World Chalice. Go into a Link Summon, which goes into a Chalice Monster again, then do your Chalice Plays, right? When your Chalice Plays, you go into a Guard Dragon Play, which is the, again, which is your World, uh, you know, your your Lib, the key, key World Key Master, which can only be Link Summoned, you guessed it, by having a World Legacy card in your graveyard, right? And all of a sudden, you know, then its effect is that you can set any World Legacy card from your spell or trap from your deck 
onto the field and activate it if it's a spell, obviously. If you have a water dagger, you get more uh, monster in your graveyard, which you do. So you go into all these plays, and then you can go into you know Justicia. Justicia can be made by having a world chalice normal monster, and then a non-normal monster, and use the normal monster as a synchro. You go into a play right there, and it can just go on and on and on. So it's an all revolving circle. Now, when you make so in general, when you make um, a, a you know an archetype with multiple you know a deck with multiple archetypes. Each archetype that you make needs to fulfill a specific role of, fit, of you know, fitting in in the weakness that the other archetype doesn't have. You need to fill that gap. You know, one archetype needs to add, another archetype needs to defend, another archetype needs to, you know, respond. Each archetype needs to work all in parts of a bigger whole. Okay, so I've been saying like. All these archetypes need to work in a bigger hole, and that's generally it. So I made it was a really long um, discussion I had there with Chalice, and obviously a lot of uh, provided an example there that you, you will have seen. But these are these are all these things that when you're making a you know a deck with multiple archetypes, you need to understand that deck that have multiple archetypes, each archetype needs to fulfill a specific role. And whenever you go to the multi route where you're using two archetypes, or you're going three, or you're going four, you're going five, however many archetypes you want to put in there, a minimum amount of mishmash you want to put in. When making a deck with multiple archetypes, you must remember that each archetype has a role to fulfill. And the role that it fulfills needs to fill in the weakness of the previous archetype. So what you want to do is, is to use one archetype to fix the problems of the previous um, archetype. And that's really okay, let me just close that. Right? And that's really what you need to do. Yeah. So once you've uh, done that, now let me just get back to my train of thought because you know there's some noises out there. But anyways, as I was saying, like you need to have these archetypes fill, as I was saying, yeah, fill a specific role and fill in the weakness of the previous archetype. So if if your first archetype is good at attacking and not good at defending, then you get a second archetype that's good at defending and not attacking, so that when you put these two archetypes together, you get a you get a better deck out of it. Two bad decks combine to make a better deck, and this is where having you know decks with multiple archetypes, mixing and matching, is very nice. It can help you create something special. Can help you create something new and different, and make you create something that no one has you know. No, I won't say that no one has ever seen before in Yu-Gi-Oh, but. That, but but that some a deck that you can be proud of, a deck that you can, you know, you can look and enjoy how it plays, because decks with multiple archetypes play in, play, in a myriad, play in very interesting ways, and this is something that you know as I've been playing the game, I've become a master at putting archetypes together. You know, whether it's two, three, four, and this is something that needs practice again, and this is something that. When you look at an archetype, obviously, um, and you play this archetype, you need to. One of the best ways of, uh, the easiest ways of putting multi, uh, you know, multiple archetypes together, is finding, is starting with one solid archetype, whatever it is, and understanding the goal of that archetype, and then what you want to do is with that first archetype, you want to fulfill that goal as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And so whatever archetype you're going to add on to this, it needs to strengthen that first archetype. And you need to understand that you're not there to hinder the first archetype, you're there to strengthen it, you're there to give it more options. And you're also there to have that archetype feed into your secondary archetype so that they both feed off each other and they both benefit each other. Remember, uh, you know, when building a deck with multiple archetypes, whether it's two, three, four, 
you know, how many you want to put in. Mishmashes work. Why do mishmashes work and why do decks that just have loads of archetypes or loads of cards, you know, work? It's because when effects, it's possible for effects to synergize with each other. When you get a lot of the effects that have, that are the same, or that do the same thing, you can build a sort of, you know, pseudo archetype, a sort of link with effects. And this is something that you, that, you know, I'd like to explain to you, my fellow students. It is possible to link effects together. It's possible to create a sort of bond with effects when effects share the same abilities or do the same thing. If you put a lot of cards that add into your deck, for example, then you'll find that your deck will be really quite consistent. Yeah, even if the archetypes, even if the cards used are not archety uh, not archetypal cards that fit in together, but because they all share the same purpose, because they all have one goal, right? Then they'll pretty much get the job done. And that's really what you've got to look at when building, um, you know, decks with multiple archetypes. That's all really I've got to say about this. Yeah, that's it. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel. And uh, wait a couple of minutes and you'll, seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.